All right, let's dive in here. We're going to head out west for game number one tonight. Pac-12 action as UCLA traveling uh, to Utah uh, to take on uh, the Utes. And this game hovering right around, what do we got, seven uh, right now for UCLA. Uh, 130 and a half is the total in this one. 11 o'clock Eastern time tip. Uh, well, a couple of interesting things here, Ralph, with this game. Number one, we did see it uh, back in January. It wasn't uh, very pretty uh, for Utah. UCLA handled their business. Now uh, they've got to travel uh, to take on Utah on their own home court. Not a great stretch here for Utah over the last uh, couple of weeks. How do you see this one playing out? Well, you know, it didn't make my card, and it was close to being a best bet here. I really do like the under here. And obviously, two slow-paced teams, two teams that are just playing incredible defense. The reason I didn't use it was this. The first total was 136.5. It dropped 5.5 points. Now, the first game went under by 20-some points, so it's still in the frame. But I don't like giving away that much value in the rematch. But with that said, Ken Palm, UCLA number two efficiency. Ken Palm, Utah number 34. Tempos, both in the mid 200, slow paced. This McCronin team is playing defense like Cincinnati used to play. Look at these last couple numbers. Last game might be the best defensive performance in college basketball this year. They held California to 22%. Joel Brown for the Bears shot five of 11 for two points. The rest of the California Bears shot three of 28 from two Ooh. points. I mean, that's amazing defense. And you look at Utah. What Utah's done offensively has struggled. Defensive side of the ball, three of the last four opponents, they've held them to 33.9, 37.1, 44.4. Utah's offense, the last six games, 28.1, 39.1, 49.1. That was home against Colorado, 32.2 and 38.3. Defense travels, uh, no real opinion on the side. I still think there's value playing this game under the total. All right, still thinking there is uh, some value to the under. Um, hard to imagine this thing being a shootout, Dwayne, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, how are you looking at this one tonight? Am I back on a show with Marco? Because now we're, I'm going opposite <laughs> Ralph here. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't really have to be a shootout for this game to go over. I mean, with a total at 130 and a half. So, and again, my first instinct is to always look at the total. That's been my bread and butter in college basketball. And so Ralph mentioned it. We do have two of the slowest paced offenses in Pac-12. Uh, so that makes you think under. Uh, then we look at that first meeting, as Ralph also mentioned, uh, the posted total was 136 and a half. They only combined for 117 points. Uh, so again, it makes you think under for the rematch here. Uh, and the odds makers opened this total six points lower than the first meeting. And I just think that that is an over adjustment. Um, there were only 19 combined free throw attempts in that first meeting, and they only hit 10 of them. Uh, so I think it's pretty safe to say we should see a bunch more points from the free throw line in this one. Uh, and then I look at Utah's conference home games. Utah's only had one conference home game this season where they combined points uh, were under 130, and that was against a Cal team that ranks dead last in the Pac-12 in both offensive efficiency and tempo. Uh, it's not quite as cut and dried on the UCLA side, uh, but only three of UCLA's eight conference road games saw the teams combined for less than 130 points. Uh, Oregon State was one of those games, and they ranked second to last in offensive efficiency and tempo in the Pac-12, uh, so I don't even consider that game. Uh, just for comparison, Utah ranks sixth in offensive efficiency and fifth in defensive efficiency in the Pac-12 um, in Ken Palm's ratings. And, and when you look at UCLA's conference road games versus teams that rank in the top half of the conference in offensive efficiency, and again, Utah's right there at number six, uh, three of those four games ended with more than 130 points scored. Uh, so I think this total's been adjusted just a little bit too much from that previous matchup. Um, it looks to me like this game should end up in the low 130s, uh, so I lean to the over here. 
All right, leaning towards the over. Uh, so we got one under, one over here, Brian. Uh, you know what? You know what your job is. Let's go. Where are you rolling in this one here tonight, Brian? Well, unlike these two gentlemen who make a living off of totals, I don't do a lot of totals in college basketball, so <laughs> nobody's going to win that argument. I will say, um, if you follow me at all, you know I'm a big proponent of the shot quality numbers. I like to look at things that are not in the final scoreboard, a uh, different way to handicap the games. And take a look at these Bruins. Um, I want to find a lot of luck involved in these, and I'm trying to find teams that have some value in that regard. Bruins are two and four straight up in shot quality yellow games. Now, those are the games and contests that could have gone either way. Uh, you look at the shooting uh, season to date shooting percentages based on the shots taken uh, and shot quality comes up with those numbers. Um, in three of their four losses, UCLA should have won. Uh, only Baylor has a legitimate win over UCLA this season. That, that really impresses me. That's why at this point, I think UCLA is the team to beat in the uh, tournament this year. I, I just go out and uh, crown them right now. I think they're the best team. Uh, 12 straight games, UCLA has had a post-game winning percentage of 68% or higher. So they're winning, and they're all legitimate wins. Uh, Utah, 6-2 and two in those yellow shot quality metrics. So they've been a lot luckier than the Bruins have on the season. Uh, they dropped three straight heading into this contest with post-game winning percentages of 37, 28, and 29. So not only are they losing, they haven't been competitive as of late. Now, that to say that Utah isn't going to win this game, they have to be able to win it by keeping UCLA out of transition. Uh, the Bruins rank 215th in shot quality points per possession in the half court, while the Utes rank 40th defensively in the half court. If they could keep UCLA from running on them, and UCLA doesn't run a lot, if they could keep them from doing that, they could win this game. Unfortunately, it's hard for me to go against UCLA. Um, UCLA is a team I think will win the game outright. And the points are kind of expensive considering they won the first game. But I would still lean towards the minus seven with UCLA in this one. All right. There we go. A couple of totals plays. We got a side play. And if I'm not mistaken, Brian Leonard just said the Pac-12 is going to win the championship. All right. Let's go on here.